My name is Rick Renner, and it's hard to believe it, but I'm seated in the ruins of the great temple of Artemis in Ephesus. Today, this looks like a swamp and a bunch of fallen rocks. But in fact, these are the ruins of the great temple of Artemis, which in the first century was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The temple actually sat right where I am and it faced the harbor. And inside the interior courtyard of the temple was a massive statue of the goddess Artemis. Massive, colossal. And as the ship sailed into the harbor, they would see Artemis looking at them as they approached the city of Ephesus. And people came here from all over the world to worship Artemis. When the church was born in the city of Ephesus and people began to be converted, the church was being established, people were being delivered of demonic influences, no one thought the devil was funny. That's very important at this time of the year when people are getting ready to celebrate Halloween. Is the devil funny? Is the devil worth celebrating? I remember when I was a kid, I dressed up like a skeleton one year, another year I dressed up like a devil. We thought that was fun. We didn't understand that the devil is serious business. The devil is not funny. And the early church didn't believe he was funny either. They knew the words of Jesus from John 10:10. 10, 10. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's what the devil comes to do. So what should we do right now while the rest of the world is celebrating Halloween? Should we play trick or treat? Or should we do something different? And that is what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to the program. My name is Rick Renner, and this is Monday. It is going to be a great week. I declare that to you in Jesus' name. Just take it by faith. And as we get started, I want to remind you that if you need prayer, we are here for you. Just call the number that is on the screen or send us an email. And as soon as the phone rings or as soon as your email shows up in our inbox, our team is going to begin to pray for you. We really will. So call us or write us right now. But this week, we're going to be looking at how Christians should respond to Halloween. I call the whole series Trick or Treat, A Christian Response to Halloween. It comes in five parts. I have never taught anything on this subject before, so this is brand new. I believe this will be a benefit to you and to your kids and to your grandchildren. Trick or treat, a Christian response to Halloween, and it comes with the study guide. Wow, it is gonna be such a rich week as we see how Christians should respond to this pagan holiday. And right now, we're also offering you my book, which is called Dress to Kill. The full title says, you don't have to take it anymore because you are dressed to kill, a biblical approach to spiritual warfare and armor. If you do not have a copy, of Dress to Kill, dear friend, you need to have a copy of this book in your home. This is a book that you'll read and you'll refer to it again and again and again. You need to know what the Bible teaches about the devil and our authority over him and the weapons which God has given us to resist him and to drive him back. This is really a substantial book. It's read all over the world. It's used in Bible schools. Pastors have it in their offices, and you need one in your home. And it comes with pictures. You know, Christians love pictures. Me too. Pictures help us really visualize what we're studying. And in this book, there are marvelous full-color illustrations of what kind of armor God has given to us. Oh, I just wish I could show you these pictures right now. But you will just love this book, and I want you to order your copy today. And for those who become partners, I want to remind you that we will immediately send you a package of books as our way of saying welcome to the partner family. We'll send you Denise's book, The Gift of Forgiveness, and my book called Life in the Combat Zone. I want to read to you the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 28. Listen to what he said. Verse 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations. 
That was not a suggestion. That was Jesus' command to the church and to every Christian. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Then in verse 20, he says, teaching them to observe all things. And then in verse 20, the very end of the verse, we have this marvelous promise. Jesus says, and lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. It is Jesus' promise that his power will be with anyone who goes with the gospel or who helps the gospel to go to others. Denise and I live here in Russia, and from this studio in Moscow, we're broadcasting the teaching of the Bible in obedience to the Great Commission to people all over the world. Jesus said, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Just today I saw a list of the nations that are tuning in to receive this Bible teaching ministry. Wow, it is amazing. I am so thankful for it. But when you become a partner, you help us to do it. So the promise, lo, I'm with you always, doesn't just belong to me and Denise. It belongs to anybody who helps us do the job. And Jesus says, lo, the Greek really means, and wow, 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 will I ever be with you. And it is the promise of God's supernatural power to show up in the lives of those who go or in those who help others to go. And my friend, when you become a partner, you can be sure God's power is going to show up in your life. Amen. But today, I'm beginning my new series called Trick or Treat, A Christian's Response to Halloween. <clears throat> and today, we're going to be discussing, is the devil funny? You know, when I was a little boy, I dressed up like the devil on Halloween with my sisters who dressed up like spooks and witches. And together we'd get our big brown paper sacks and we'd begin to walk up and down the streets in our neighborhood on our side of Tulsa. We'd knock on doors. We'd say trick or treat. And of course, people would give us candy. But the streets were just loaded with kids dressed like us. It looked like the streets were loaded with little goblins and devils, and demons, and witches, and Frankenstein, and vampires. I mean, we really donned horrific-looking costumes and played it up on Halloween. And not just that, but in the week before Halloween, my precious mother, who led me to Jesus and was a very committed Christian, would give me construction paper so that I could draw pictures of witches, and ghosts, and jack-o'-lanterns, and goblins, and then we would paste them all over the big picture window in the front of our house. So we were really decorated for Halloween. Today, we would never do that. My mother would never condone that today. But back in those days, people really did not have an understanding that the devil was serious. And in fact, a lot of people thought the devil was funny. But is the devil funny? Really? Is he funny? And should Christians be celebrating Halloween, which is really a very sinister holiday, a very evil holiday? Is the devil funny? Well, today we're going to see. So reach for your Bible. And I want us to see what Jesus said about the devil in John chapter 10. So open your Bible to John chapter 10. And today we're going to begin in verse 10, where Jesus made this statement. He said, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. This verse is just amazing. Jesus knew the devil better than anybody else. And in this verse, he calls the devil a thief. The devil is a thief. And in fact, the Greek word that's used here is the Greek word kleptes. You hear another word? It's where you get the word kleptomaniac. But the word thief that is used here, the Greek word kleptes, literally describes a bandit, a thief, a pickpocket, a scam artist, and it is where we get the term for a kleptomaniac. And by using this word kleptes, which is where we get the word kleptomaniac, Jesus tells us that the devil is a thief and he's been a thief from the very, very beginning. He can't help himself. There's something in his nature so twisted, so bent, that he just can't keep himself from stealing. In fact, the very first time we see the devil in the Bible, what is he doing? He's trying to steal the throne of God. He wants God's rightful place 
And when you read about it in the Old Testament, he doesn't just want the throne of God. He wants God's geographical location. Not only that, he wants the worship of the angels. The very first time the devil appears in Scripture, he appears stealing, stealing, conniving like a scam artist. The next time he shows up is in the Garden of Eden, when through the serpent, he tries to steal Adam's position, Adam's position of authority over the earth, and he does it successfully. Again, he's stealing. He's a scam artist. He's after whatever belongs to someone else. In regard to you, he wants your health. Does he need your health? No. He's just a scam artist. He's a kleptomaniac. He can't restrain himself. If you have health, he wants your health. If you're married, guess what? He wants your marriage. Does he need your marriage? No. He just can't restrain himself because he is a kleptomaniac. He wants your marriage simply because he is a thief. How about your money? Does the devil need your money? No, he doesn't need your money. But he wants your money because he's a scam artist. He's a kleptomaniac. He cannot restrain himself. He is so twisted. He is so demented. He is so bent that he cannot restrain himself from stealing. It is his nature to steal. That is what Jesus says in this verse. It is just amazing. But wait, then Jesus goes on to say the thief from the Greek word kleptes, the kleptomaniac, the scam artist, the bandit, the pickpocket, cometh not but for to steal. Now Jesus adds, he uses the word steal, which is the Greek word klepto, which is in the same family as the word kleptes. It again describes one so artful in the way that he steals mm, that his exploits of thievery are nearly undetectable. A scam artist or a pickpocket. And again, it is where we get the word kleptomaniac. And in fact, the idea is this. The kleptomaniac, when he shows up, will begin to behave like a kleptomaniac. He can't restrain himself. He'll steal, steal, and steal because it is his nature to steal. He doesn't take because he needs anything. He takes simply because it is his nature to take and to steal. He is a kleptomaniac. That is what Jesus really says in this verse. The kleptomaniac, when he shows up, will begin to behave like a kleptomaniac. If you're healthy, he wants your health. If you're married, he wants your marriage. If you have money, he wants your marriage. If you have kids, he wants your kids. If you have grandkids, he wants your grandkids. What I want you to see, my friend, is there is nothing funny about the devil at all. He is a thief. And Jesus says when he shows up, the first thing he'll begin to do is to steal. But wait. Then Jesus goes on in John 10.10. And he continues to say, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill. Well, for years when I read that word kill, I saw the picture of massacre, bloodshed, slaughter. I could just see the devil showing up and just slaying people. And then I got quite a shock when I opened my Greek New Testament and looked at this verse in the Greek text. This word kill really does not mean to kill at all. That's really not a good translation. It is the Greek word thuo. Now, anybody who knows Greek immediately recognizes the word thuo because the word thuo does not mean to kill as to murder, but actually it is the Greek word which means to sacrifice, to sacrifice. Hold on, I'm going to explain this to you. This word kill, the Greek word thuo, really means to sacrifice or to surrender or give up something that is precious and dear. Used among the Greeks, this word thuo described that moment when they would sacrifice something precious to the gods. And it was also used among the Greek-speaking Jews to describe sacrifices they would make to God when they really surrendered something precious and something dear. And now Jesus uses that same word thuo in the context of this verse. Well, the first thing Jesus tells us is the devil is a thief. The thief cometh not but to steal. That word thief 
Again, the Greek word klepto. It's the kleptomaniac, the one that is bent and so twisted that his nature is just to take and take and steal and steal, not because he needs, simply because he cannot restrain himself. He's just a thief. And Jesus says, the thief cometh not but to steal. The word klepto, when he shows up very artfully, he will begin to steal from people almost like a scam artist or like a pickpocket. He will very artfully begin to conduct thievery in the lives of people. And then Jesus says, and to kill from this word thuo, what does it mean? Jesus was teaching, here it is, this word thuo, which means to make a religious sacrifice, that the devil knows how to disguise his voice to sound religious and sometimes he can even disguise his voice to sound like God. And here's what he says. You know what? There's no hope of recovery. There's no way you'll ever be able to restore what's been lost. Why try to believe? Just lay it all on the altar. Just walk away from it. Give it to God. Walk away from it. You might as well just give up, sacrifice it, and walk away. Or here we find... The devil knows how to religiously convince people that there is no hope and they ought to just surrender everything, give up, and walk away from any hope of recovery. This killer wants you to lay down your promises. He wants you to lay down your dreams. He wants you to lay down everything that remains in your life that he hasn't already stolen from you. He wants to convince you just to give it up. You say, well, can the devil really disguise his voice to sound like the voice of God? Well, you have to remember that even when Jesus was in his wilderness temptation, the devil quoted scripture to Jesus, but he quoted it out of context and Jesus recognized it was the voice of the devil trying to disguise himself to sound like scripture or to sound like God. And now in this verse, we remarkably find out that the devil comes to steal and to kill, the word kill, the word thuo, which means he can disguise his voice to sound like God, coaxing you into surrendering, giving up, and just walking away from everything you hold to be precious and dear. Just lay it on the altar. There's no hope of recovery. Just surrender it and walk away. That is amazing. But wait. Jesus then goes on to say that he comes to destroy. The word destroy in Greek is the word apolumi. It means to ruin, to waste, to devastate, or to destroy. It is the very same word that is used in Luke 3, verse 16, when John the Baptist said of Jesus, I'm not worthy to unloose his shoes. That word unloose is the same word here translated destroyed. So you have to think about how you unloose a person's shoes in the first century. Well, their feet were covered with sandals that were all strapped together with cords and ropes. And one rope at a time, you would begin to unloose it until finally the shoe became unraveled and it just fell off. Well, in the context of this verse, Jesus is saying here is the devil's intention. He wants to show up and steal from you. Then he wants to convince you to sacrifice everything that is left over, and he will not be satisfied until he takes it to the next level, and on the next level, he will continue attacking you until he has undone you completely, and you feel that your life has come unraveled. Unraveled. That is his intention, to unravel you, to undo you, until you feel your life is falling to pieces. That's literally what this word destroyed means. And I would translate John 10, 10 like this. Here's the RIV. This thief wants to get his hands into every good thing in your life. In fact, this pickpocket is looking for any opportunity to wiggle his way so deeply into your personal affairs that he can walk off with everything you hold precious and dear. And that's not all. When he's finished stealing all your goods and possessions, He'll take his plan to rob you blind to the next level by creating conditions and situations so horrible that you'll see no way to solve the problem except to sacrifice everything that remains from previous attacks. The goal of this thief is to totally devastate your life 
If nothing stops him, he'll leave you insolvent, flat broke, cleaned out in every area of your life. You'll end up feeling as if you're finished and out of business. Make no mistake, the enemy's aim is to obliterate you. That is a marvelous RIV translation of John 10.10. But hey, Jesus goes on in John 10, 10, and he says, but I am come, I am come, that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. When Jesus says, I am come, that, the word that is a Greek word, henna, which means I have come for this explicit purpose. Now Jesus is explicitly stating why he has come. I'm come that they might have, that they might have, is a form of the Greek word echo, which means to have, to hold, or to possess. Jesus says, I'm come that people might have, they might hold, they might really possess life. And the word life is a form of the Greek word zoe, which describes a life that is filled with vitality or a life that is filled with zest, a marvelous life, and that they might have it more abundantly. More abundantly in Greek is the word perisos, which describes something that is abundant, something excessive, something exceeding or extraordinary, something that abounds in an extraordinary measure, so profuse that it is likened to a river overflowing and flooding beyond its banks, something that is overflowing, plentiful, or even super abundant. And I would translate the second part of John 10:10 10, 10 like this, but I have specifically come with the express purpose that you will have, hold, and possess a phenomenal and amazing life. My purpose is that you will possess life so full that it overflows and spills over like a mighty river so full of water that its banks can no longer contain it all. I'm talking about an amazingly full, spirited, and vivacious life that is literally overflowing and spilling over. I have explicitly come so you can possess an abundant, profuse, plentiful, and bountiful life. That is what Jesus came to give. Is that amazing? But wait, I want to read all of John 10, 10 to you as a complete whole from the RIV. Listen to this. Jesus says, talking about the devil, who is not funny. Jesus says, this thief wants to get his hands into every good thing in your life. In fact, this pickpocket is looking for any opportunity to wiggle his way so deeply into your personal affairs that he can walk off with everything you hold precious and dear. And that's not all. When he's finished stealing all your goods and possessions, he'll take his plan to rob you blind to the next level by creating conditions and situations so horrible that you'll see no way to solve the problems except to sacrifice everything that remains from previous attacks. The goal of this thief is to totally devastate your life. If nothing stops him, he'll leave you insolvent, flat broke, cleaned out in every area of your life. You'll end up feeling as if you're finished and out of business. Make no mistake, the enemy's ultimate aim is to obliterate you. But I, I have specifically come with the express purpose that you will have, hold, and possess a phenomenal and amazing life. My purpose is that you will possess life so full that it overflows and spills over like a mighty river, so full of water that its banks can no longer contain it all. I'm talking about an amazingly full, spirited, and vivacious life that is literally overflowing and spilling over. I have explicitly come so you can possess an abundant, profuse, plentiful, and bountiful life life. That is what Jesus came to give. Wow. And that's what you can have. But the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And there is nothing funny about the devil. And Christians should not be celebrating the devil on Halloween. But when we come back in the next program, I want to walk you into the New Testament and show you how New Testament Christians responded to pagan celebrations. Let me ask you, if the Apostle Paul was here today, what would he say about Christians who celebrate 
Halloween. That's what we're going to see in the next program. But today we have seen there's nothing funny about the devil. In fact, we're told in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 9, we are to resist him steadfast in the faith. He is not someone to celebrate. He is someone to be resisted. I'll be back in just a moment, and I want to pray for you. Halloween is widely celebrated in the Western world, but what should the Christian response to Halloween be? Although it may look like fun and games, there is a sinister evil behind Halloween, and Christians need to rethink their participation in such a holiday. There is no need to be condemning of those who celebrate it, but neither should a believer participate in it. In Trick or Treat, a Christian response to Halloween, Rick Renner delves into the subject of the occult and the need to refrain from anything that hints of evil. The devil is no joke. Demons are no joke. Witchcraft is real. Is this really something that Christians should participate in or celebrate? In this five-part series, Rick Renner covers the New Testament attitude toward the devil and demons, the reality of the demonic realm, the New Testament mandate to refrain from all occultic activities, the historical beginnings of Halloween. Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $10, you'll be so glad you took time to digest this powerful series. In addition, you can also purchase the book, Dress to Kill. In this book, Rick answers questions about the often misunderstood subject of spiritual warfare. This comprehensive study teaches you how to put on the full armor of God and the importance of each piece of armor in defeating the enemy. This powerful book can be yours for just $22. Don't miss this special offer, the series Trick or Treat, a Christian response to Halloween, and the book Dress to Kill. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friend, this is Rick Renner. We have a need in our ministry and I need you to help meet the need. So please just for a moment, hear my heart. Our ministry is really growing. Wow, it is amazing what is taking place. People are reaching out to us from every nook and cranny around the world because they're receiving teaching that they feel they can trust. And they're calling us for prayer. Wow. What a responsibility to pray for people. They're calling us for resources. They're calling us for support. They are reaching out to us in multiple languages, in English and Russian, and in other languages from around the world. And God has given us the responsibility to minister to these precious souls. But we're growing so much that we have run out of space. We're bursting at the seams in our American office and we need a new building. And we have found the building that we believe is ours. And guess what? It's fully furnished. All we have to do is move in. And so I'm asking you to please pray about becoming a part of the giving team into this special expansion project. Just go online. You'll read there on our homepage how you can participate in this project or give us a call. Hey friend, we're out of time, but I want to remind you that I'm offering you my series called Trick or Treat, a Christian's response to Halloween, and it comes with a marvelous study guide. And we're also offering you my book, which has really become a Christian classic, which is called Dress to Kill, a Biblical Approach to Spiritual Warfare and Armor. But if you feel the devil has been ravaging your life, call us or write us. We want to pray with you. But let me pray for you now. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over that thief, over his stealing, his killing, and his destroying. I command you to loose my friend in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there's power, and I'll see you tomorrow. 